All right. Welcome to my YouTube channel, viewers. Um, if uh, today is your first time of coming to my videos, please consider subscribing. Hit the subscribe button, the red button just below this video, and also uh, use the thumbs up. That's the like button. Thank you very much. So in today's class, we are going to be looking at indices as a topic. Okay, and this is a very beautiful concept of mathematics, which is actually an English word. So what is indices? Indices is just the plural of the word index. The plural of the word index, which actually means power. And you can also call it exponent. So the mathematics of indices is where we study numbers and their powers numbers and their exponents and what does that mean so for example if i have say 2 raised to power 3 now so this number now is raised to a power of 3 and so this is called the base why this is called the power and like i said this is the power or the exponent and you can also call it the index of 2 and what does that mean 2 raised to power 3 actually means that is 2 multiplying itself up to 3 times. That's 2 times 2 times 2, the number of power you have. And so if I say a raised to power 3, uh, let's say 2, for example, that is a times a, 2 times. So if I then say a raised to power n, so this means a times a times a times a up to n times so that's how we write it so you are multiplying a by itself up to n times that is the number you have as the power and so that's what we mean by uh, indices the study of numbers and their index the powers okay and now for us to effectively do this indices that are studying numbers and their powers would have to learn how to you know, do operations, basic operations of numbers with powers. And for us to be able to do that, we need what we call the rules of indices. We need to know the basic pattern of doing these operations, okay? And so we are going to look at the rules of indices. What are the basic rules of indices? They include the following. Now we have what we call the multiplication rule. That is, if I have a raised to the power n multiplied by a m multiplied by a raised to the power n, what is that going to give me? Please quickly, you will notice that if I have, for example, a raised to the power 3 times a raised to the power 2, what does this thing mean? It actually means a raised to the power 3 is the same thing as a times a times a. And then times, while a raised to the power 2 is a times a, that's 2 times. So you see that if you remove this bracket, you will simply get a raised to power, sorry, a times a times a times a times a. And so you're going to get a multiplying itself, how many times? Five times, which is actually a raised to power five. So you will simply see that a raised to power three times a raised to power two is just the same thing as a raised to power three plus what? Two which is the same thing as the a raised to the power 5 that we have here. And that gave us a general rule for multiplication of numbers with powers when the bases are the same. So if the bases are the same, you simply pick one of the bases and then just add the powers. And so that's what we call the multiplication rule. So it obeys. And then what about the second rule, which we call the division rule? So the same thing is applicable here. If I use this same example here, you would see that this is a raised to power 3 all over a raised to power 2. This is simply going to give me a times a times a times a into three places, and then this one will be a times a. Now, by division, a will take away a, and a will take away a, and here I will only have just a, which is the same thing as a raised to power 1, right? And so you would see that division is just a normal thing as doing your subtraction. So instead of doing this division, I would simply have done a raised to power 3 minus 2, which will give me a raised to power 1. And so that gives us the general rule of division as a raised to power m minus n. Okay, and then the third rule, we have what we call the power-power rule. 
And so if I have a raised to power m, all raised to power n, this is the same thing as a raised to power m times n. And so you can as well see an example for that. Now in the fourth one, we have a raised to power 0. Whenever a number is raised to the power of 0, this is the same thing as 1. And of course, you can see that here. For instance, if I say a raised to power 0, you will see that this guy is actually the same thing as a raised to power, say, let me use a number now, say 3 minus 3. And that is true. And of course, you can see that 3 minus 3 is 0. So this is the same thing as a raised to power 0. And so, but I know that by this rule, the second rule here, a raised to power 3 minus 3 is the same thing as a raised to power 3 all over a raised to power 3. And that is going to give me a, raised, a times a times a times a, a times a times a times a. And this will take away this, this will take away this, and you eventually get 1. So any number raised to the power of 0 is the same thing as what? 1. What about the fifth rule? When I have a negative index, what happens to that? You would see that this is the same thing as 1 all over the positive index. So the negative power here will change to the reciprocal, and then you will return a raised to the power of the positive n instead of negative. And that you can as well see that, of course, a raised to power, let me use our negative n as an example, this thing is the same thing as a raised to power 0 minus n. If I do this subtraction, I get back my a raised to power minus n. Now, but by this second rule also, you will see that this is the same thing as a raised to power 0 all over a raised to power n. And a raised to power 0 by the fourth rule here is the same thing as 1. And that will be all over a raised to power n, which is exactly what we have here. And then the fifth rule, or sorry, the sixth rule that we're going to look at here is um, the rule of um, a fractional power. What if I have, uh, let's say, a raised to power 1 over n? This is the same thing as uh, a to the nth root. And in general, in general, if I have a raised to power m over n, this is the same thing as the nth root of a all raised to the power of m. So what happens here is that your numerator will turn to a root, and sorry, your denominator will turn to a root, and your numerator will turn to a power. So in this case here, in this special case where the numerator is 1, of course, if you take this to the power of 1, you will get back the same. And that's why it is this way. That is why whenever you have, for example, let's say um, a raised to power half, this is always uh, square root of a. Because square root, of course, you can write that, so it's always invisible there. If you have a raised to power 1 over 3, this is the same thing as the cube root of a. Okay, so now we call this um, uh, the fractional index rule. If you have the power as a fraction, the numerator of the fraction will be a power, the denominator will go as a root. And um, okay, that's the sixth root. Sorry, the sixth rule that we are going to see. Remember, these rules are not in any order, there is no order. Okay, so the seventh one that we are going to see here says that if I have the multiplication of a and b raised to the power of m, that this is the same thing as m, sorry, a raised to the power m times b raised to the power m. That means the power is distributive on multiplication. It can distribute on anything multiplying themselves. And this can actually be in two places. I can say the second part is division. It is also distributive on division. That means this is going to give me a raised to power m all over b raised to power m. Now, but this is not true for subtraction and addition. And so remark that. Note, this is not true for uh, uh, so, uh, addition and subtraction. That means if I have a plus b all raised to power m, this is not the same as a raised to power m plus b raised to power m. Always note that. And it also holds for subtraction. It is power is not distributive on addition and subtraction. That means this is not the same as 
a power m minus b power m. Please take note of that. But that holds for multiplication and for division. Okay. And then uh, the last rule we are going to see here um, is that uh, if I have a raised to power m to be equal to um, a raised to power n, that means two numbers, two numbers in index form having the same basis. That means the base is the same and they are equal. That if this happens, then their powers must also be what? Equal. Please take note of this. And so these are the basic rules of indices that we have. So we have the multiplication rule, division rule, the power power rule. We have the zeroth rule, sorry, the zero power rule. We have the negative index rule, the fractional index rule. We have the, um, when you have a power of products, power of uh, quotient, and, um, and then we have when you have um, two index numbers with the same base, being equal, their powers will also be equal. Now, quickly, we are going to take a few examples. Well, before we go to examples, please take note of this. When you have a negative number, note, when you have a negative number raised to a power of, say, m, now, this particular number now is the same thing as Positive a raised to power m if my m is even. And it will give me the negative a raised to power m if my m is odd. An example of that is when I have, for example, 1 raised to power, say, 2. This is simply the same thing as 1 raised to power 2. So, because this will give you 1. And but if I have minus 1 raised to power 3, that rule there is telling us that this is minus 1 raised to power 3, and 1 raised to power 3 is 1, which will give us minus 1. And that holds for any number at all. If you have negative 3, say, raised to power of, uh, uh, let's say, 4, this is the same thing as uh, 3 raised to power 4, because 4 is even. And this is going to give us, what, 81. And, of course, we know that if you have now negative 3, say, raised to power 3, 3 being an odd number, this is going to give us minus 3 raised to power 3. And 3 raised to power 3 is 27, so you get minus 27. And so this particular, uh, yeah, of course, it should be a rule. It can always guide us when we are raising a negative number to a power. So if the power is even, just remove the negative sign and take the power, you'll get the same answer. But if the power is odd, you just remove also the negative sign, take the power, and then attach the negative after you've gotten an answer. And that is the solution. Now, we are going to take just a few examples on how to make use of these rules to solve problems. How do you use these rules to solve mathematical problems? Let's look at a few examples. So, problems. Okay, here we have... Number one problem we have here says, evaluate the following. The example says, evaluate the following, and we have 2x raised to the power half multiplied by 2x raised to the power 3, or raised to the power of 3 over 2. So this is going to give me 2x to the power of half. If I open this bracket, I am going to get um, this power will distribute. You remember? that uh, power distributes on multiplication. So it will distribute here. So I'll have 2 raised to power 3 over 2 multiplied by x raised to power 3 times 3 over 2 because that one already has a power. And so that is going to give us... And as, in fact, we are supposed to do the same here. So let's quickly do that. If we do that here, we are going to have 2 raised to power half then multiply, there's a multiplication here, x raised to power half also, so because the power will distribute. And when that happens, this is going to give us 2 raised to power half times x raised to power half times 2 raised to power 3 over 2 times x raised to power, this will give us 9 over 2. And of course, we can, you remember multiplication is commutative, so 2 has the same base as this, so let them come together, let the ones that have x go together. So this is going to give us, so to multiply these 2, I will just pick one of the bases and then add their power. So I will have 1 half 
plus 3 over 2. Multiplying x, I will do the same here. I will pick one of the bases and then add up what I have here, which is 1 half plus 9 over 2. And that's going to give me, if you do the addition here, you are going to have 2 raised to power 4 over 2. And then you are multiplying by x raised to power 10 over 2. Since they have common bases, sorry, common denominators, you just pick one of it and then add their numerators. And this is going to give us 2 raised to power 2 times x raised to power 5. And so our answer is 4x raised to power half. And that's what you have as a solution to this first uh, problem that we have here. The second one that we want to look at, that we are asked to evaluate, is, um, look at it here. We have 6 to 5 raised to the power of uh, 1.5. So what do you do? You can see here now the power is decimal. Whenever you have a decimal power, now the rules we have read now only handled fractional power. So if I have a decimal power, my own effort, my, my, my target would be, can I change that power that is in decimal to be in fraction? And if I can do that, I can then apply the fractional rule or the fractional power rule. So this is going to give me 6 to 5. My 1.5 is the same thing as 3 all over what? 2. And by fractional index, the denominator will turn to a root and then the numerator will become a power. So this will simply give me square root of 6 to 5, which is what? 25, all raised to the power of 3. And that is your answer. So, which is just the same thing as 25 cube. So, when you take the cube of 25, you will get the answer to a problem. And so, that is the second issue. Now, the third one, we have a third example, which is C, sorry. We have 0 0.04, just to put it in another form. And if we do that, we also have a mixed number. And there is no rule covering for mixed number. Like I said earlier, there is a rule that covers for a fraction. And so what do I do? I'll change this into a fraction. And, that's, and even this decimal here should be changed to a fraction. And if I do that here, I am going to get 4 all over 100. And that will be raised to the power of this is minus 3 over 2. And the negative index rule says that when I have a negative power, that it is the same thing as 1 all over 4 over 100, all raised to the power of 3 over 2. And this is going to give me 1 all over, remember the fractional power, the denominator becomes a root. And so I have the root of 4 over 100, all raised to the power of 3. And this is going to give me 1 all over, the root of 4 over 100 is 2 over 10. Because the root of 4 is 2, the root of, eight, of 100 is 10. And everything is raised to the power of 3, which is going to give me 1 all over. 2 raised to the power of 3, remember that power will distribute on a fraction. 2 raised to the power of 3 will give me 8. And two raised, 10 raised to the power of 3 will give me 1,000. And when you take the reciprocal, your final answer will be 1,000 over 8. And that will give you 125 as your answer. Okay, so and that is the solution to the third problem that we have there. Okay, now the next problem we are going to look at here says that we should. Okay, so this problem says express the cube root of a, b, c raised to the power minus 4 all over the fourth root of a, q, b raised to the power minus 3. C um, with positive indices, meaning we should simplify that expression we have there and let all the powers of every variable there be positive index. And so let's try to do that. So solution, what do I do? We apply the rule. The first one is that uh, cube root means uh, power 1 over 3. And so I'm going to get A, B, C raised to the power of 4, all raised to the power of 1 over 3, all over, now the denominator there will become raised to the power of 1 over 4, and that is a cube b minus 3c, all raised to the power of uh, 1 over 4. And then what is the next? Open up the bracket. When you do that, the power will distribute on all of the variables there. 
And so I will have A raised to the power 1 over 3, B raised to the power 1 over 3. And when it distributes on this, you have minus 4 times 1 over 3, which is minus 4 over 3. So I will have C raised to the power minus 4 all over 3. And then all over, the same will happen here. This will become 3 times 1 over 4, which is 3 over 4. And this will be 4 raised to the power minus 3 over 4. And this will be C raised to the power 1 over 4. And so with that, what should I do next? All I need to do next now is to now apply the division rule. Remember the division rule here. I have A divided by this, this divided by this, this divided by this. So I'm going to apply that now. And if I do, I'm going to have A raised to the power 1 over 3 minus 3 over 4 because there is a, divide, a division of A raised to the power 3 over 4. Then times B raised to the power 1 over 3 minus also now but the power of this one is negative then that is another minus three over four and then c times c raised to power minus four over three minus one over four and so we will try to simplify this and to do that uh, one over three here you will have the lcm to be um, 12 and if the lcm is 12 you will get 4 minus uh, 4 minus 4 into 12 is 3. That's minus 9. And that's going to give you minus 6 over 12. Then B will become, remember there you will have 1 over 3 plus 3 over 4. LCM is also 12. And this goes here will give you 4. And um, this one going here will give you 3 also. 3 into this is a uh, 9 and that will be plus 9 which is uh, 13 over 12 so we have 13 over 12 sorry the the, the first part is supposed to be uh, sorry 4 minus 9 which is 5 not 3 minus 9 sorry it should be 4 minus 9 over 12 okay so that's going to give us a uh, minus 5 over 12 thank you okay so now what about this one we, there we are going to have minus 4 over 3 minus 1 over 4. 12 is also the LCM. This is 4 minus 16. This is 3. And we have 3 there. That's minus 19 over 12. So we have C raised to the power minus 19 over 12. Now, but the question is asking us to ensure that everything is expressed in positive index. So what do I do? I will apply the neg negative index rule here and also here. And if I do that, I am going to quickly get um, B is the only one positive. So it should be the only one remaining up. Then for the new denominator, if this guy comes down, it's going to become... 1 all over a raised to the power 5 over 12. So it will come down as a denominator. So I'll have a raised to the power 12, 5 over 12. And that will happen to C also. That will become 19 over 12. The negative signs uh, of the powers will disappear. And so here, what do we then have? We are going to now get... Um, so you will see that... Uh, sorry, remember that this is 13 over 12. So you will see that all of them now have common denominator as their powers. Sorry, yes, in the powers, the fractional powers have common denominators. That means I can bring out 1 over 12 from all of them. If I look at what I am saying, this is going to give us the same thing as B raised to power 13 times 1 over 12. And the denominator will be A raised to power 5 times 1 over 12. And so I can factorize out that power of 1 over 12, and that's going to give me b raised to the power 13 all over a raised to the power 5 times c raised to the power 19, all raised to the power of 1 over 12. And I can as well write that as the 12th root of b raised to the power 13 all over a raised to the power 5 times c raised to the power 19. And that is my answer. So I've been able to simplify the initial uh, 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 expression I am giving, which had negative powers. And now I have a single expression where all the powers are uh, positive. And that is the solution to that problem.
Okay, and that's the second problem, which is actually the fourth. So, but in my numbers, it is the second. So here we'll take the third now. The third problem here says, without the use of tables, okay, so we, here we have, without the use of tables, that's mathematical tables, evaluate this and this. So they are not expecting us to do this using the normal log tables or whatever to do the evaluation. They are expecting you to use the rules of indices to solve this problem. I am going to do A and then B is going to be your exercise and I expect you to put your answers in the comment section below. Okay, so when you are done, please drop your, the comments of your solution uh, to this problem as your comments in the section below. I would want to see what your solution will be. So let's take the first um, problem here. So here we have solution. The A part there says that this, we have the square root of 0 0.81 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 all over 2.25 times 10 raised to the power 7. So what do we do with that? So I would start by... First of all, trying to see that since I have a decimal number here, can I make it become a whole number? And uh, there's something beautiful about this. If you look at the numerator there, you have 0 0.81. And that, if I can take away that decimal number, the number I just have there will be 81. And 81 is a perfect square. Okay? So that means, and if you look at the denominator, you see something similar. You have 2.25. And if I remove this decimal point, I'll get 225. And it's a perfect square root. Uh, that means if you take the square root, you get a, you get a whole number. And so uh, what do I do then? I will try to find a way to take away that decimal number. And how do I do that? If you go back to a topic we call standard form, you will see that 0 0.81 is actually the same thing as 81 times 10 raised to the power minus 2. And how is that gotten? We know that 0 0.81 is the same thing as 81 all over 100. And we know that 100 is 10 raised to the power 2. And by law of indices, if I bring that up, I will have 81 times 10 raised to the power what? Minus 2. Okay. And if you do the same for the denominator, you also get that 2.25. That 2.25 is the same as 225 times 10 also raised to the power of minus 2. So if we substitute that here, we are going to have 81 times 10 raised to the power of minus 2. But there is already 10 raised to the power of minus 5 here. And uh, that's going to give me for the denominator 225 times 10 raised to the power of minus 2 times 10 raised to the power of 7. Okay, so uh, by the time I apply the multiplication rule for the numerator and the denominator, that is going to give us 81 times 10 raised to the power minus 2 plus minus 5, which is minus 7, all over 2 to 5 times uh, 10 raised to the power minus 2 plus 5, and sorry, plus 7, and that is going to give us, uh, sorry, minus, yeah, that's going to give us my, uh, positive 5. And so we'll have positive 5 there. And then, now, to be able to simplify all of this, what do we do? You remember that this is the same thing as the square root of um, 81 over 225, you know, multiplied by the square root of uh, 10 raised to the power minus 7 all over 10 raised to the power 5. Now, because, of course, you know that I can split this division here. If I bring this thing back again by sword rule, I will still get back by 81 times the numerator here, 225 times the denominator here. Okay, so, and if that is true, I know that square root can go on numerator and denominator, and that will give me 9 over 15, because the square root of 81 is 9, and the square root of 225 is 15. By, now, this is the same thing as, uh, now, of course, we know that square root by the... The fractional power that we just talked about is the same thing as raised to the power half. And so I'm going to get 10 raised to the power minus 7 over 10 raised to the power 5 or raised to the power half. Now, which is the same thing as 9 over 15 is 0 0.6 multiplied by, now by division rule, this is going to give me 10 raised to the power 
minus 7 minus 5, which is minus 12, all raised to power half. Then by power power rule, this is going to be a multiplication of powers. So I'll have zero, a 10. Now, meanwhile, before then, uh, by the standard form I just talked about, 10, uh, sorry, 0 0.6 is the same as 10 raised, uh, 6 times 10 raised to power minus 1. And that is, uh, this one is now when you open up this bracket, you will get 10 raised to the power minus 6. And then when you now apply the multiplication rule here, you will have 6 times 10 raised to the power minus 7. Now, so that is the solution to the A part of this problem here, which I said I'm going to just take care of together with you. But the B part is going to be an exercise for you, which I expect you to do. And I want to see your solution in the comment section below. So please click this comment section, take time, pause this video, and solve this particular problem. And let me see your solution in the comment section. Right, that will be the end of our lesson for today. Please try to subscribe. The subscription is an encouragement for us. It makes us more visible. And so I covet your subscription. And also, please give us thumbs up of course, to encourage us, and then also put up your comments in the comment section below. Thank you, and see you in our next video. Bye.